Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about Windows BitLocker versus device encryption. So these are two similar yet different things. So one you could use with a certain version of Windows and one with a different version of Windows. So we're going to tell you what they are and then we're going to show you how to find these settings in both versions of Windows. All right, so if you didn't know, BitLocker is Windows' full-featured drive encryption tool available in Pro and Enterprise editions while device encryption is a simplified version found in the home edition on supported devices. So that's the key, supported devices. It offers automatic system drive protection, but lacks advanced controls like manual drive selection and policy management. All right, so why does encryption matter? So why would you want to use this to begin with? So encryption protects your data if your laptop is stolen, your drive is removed and accessed elsewhere, malware or unauthorized users attempt to access your files, you need to ensure compliance for work or school IT policies. And both these options will dramatically increase protection against physical data theft or unauthorized drive access. All right, so first we're going to talk about BitLocker, and then we'll move on to device encryption. All right, so what is BitLocker? It's Microsoft's full-featured drive encryption technology designed for advanced security, enterprise environments, and users needing control over encryption policies. So here are some of the key features you could do full drive encryption and you could also just encrypt the used space on your drive if you want to go that route so this will encrypt the entire system drive and any additional drives internal external then you have bitlocker to go which can encrypt removable usb drives then it also uses the tpm to protect encryption keys so that way you don't have to put in a password every time you boot up if you use the tpm method all right, then we have pin and startup key options. So this allows for adding a pre-boot pin or startup USB key for additional security. So this will just make your computer take a little longer to start because you'll have to uh, enter this pin and make sure your USB key is there. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get in. And then we have automatic device lockdown. This prevents access if the system detects tampering. And then we have recovery key management. So this saves your keys to your Microsoft account as your Active Directory regular Active Directory, or printed copies. And then you could also use it with Group Policy, which will allow admins to enforce encryption rules in business environments. All right, so this is ideal for IT technicians, small businesses, anyone needing strong control over encryption, and users who want pin-based startup protection. All right, so now we have device encryption. All right, so what is this? It's a simplified version of BitLocker designed for basic consumer protection not all hardware supports it, as it requires a modern device with a TPM 2.0 and secure boot. So if you're running Windows 11, you most likely have this ready to go anyways. All right, some of the key features, automatic encryption. So it encrypts the system drive automatically when the device is signed in with a Microsoft account. So some people don't like that because it kind of does it without telling you it's doing it. And then you may run into a problem uh, trying to get your data off the drive. But let's say you move it to a different computer with a different Microsoft account. All right, so it also offers a one-touch recovery key backup. So the key is stored within your Microsoft account. So you're going to have to use a Microsoft account to use device encryption. So if you're using a local account, it's not going to work for you. All right, then lightweight configuration. So minimal user interaction is required. So it's enabled only if hardware supports modern standby and TPM. So some systems will not have this option if it's an older computer. OK, so what does it not include? You don't get BitLocker to go. You can't encrypt additional drives. You don't have the pin, startup key, or advanced configuration. You can't use it with group policy. And there's no ability to pause or fine tune your encryption. So this is best used for home users, laptops used for daily personal use, and users who just want basic protection against theft. All right, so here's a little comparison table so you can see the difference between BitLocker and device encryption. So we have full system drive encryption, yes and yes, encrypt additional drives, yes and no, BitLark to go, yes and no, requires TPM 2.0, yes and yes, preboot pin or startup key, yes and no, policy customization, yes and no, group policy support, yes and no, recover key storage options, Microsoft account, Azure AD, Active Directory, USB and print, and then Microsoft account only, and who it's designed for, which we talked about, Hardware support required, and then the ease of use. All right, so now let's hop on a Windows 11 Pro computer first and check out the BitLocker settings. All right, so we're on a Windows 11 
Pro computer with control panel open here. And you can see here we have our BitLocker drive encryption, so we can click on that. So right now it's turned off, and you can see we have the option for BitLocker to go on this secondary D drive here, and BitLocker is turned off. Then we have some suggested tools for TPM administration and disk management. All right, so let's say we wanted to turn it on. We click on Turn on BitLocker. It's making sure the PC meets the requirements here. All right, so now it's asking how you want to back up the recovery key. So you could save it to your Microsoft account, save it to a file, or print it. So obviously if you're saving this to a file, you're going to probably want to put it somewhere besides the hard drive that's encrypted. Uh, maybe stick it on a flash drive and put it in your lockbox. And then if you print it, of course, you've got to be careful that you don't lose the piece of paper. You could put this in your fireproof lockbox as well. And then, of course, if you do the Microsoft account method, you have to make sure uh, you could still get into your Microsoft account, make sure you don't lose the password. And then if your account gets hacked and your password is changed, then you're going to be running into a problem here. So you're going to have to do some thinking when you decide uh, which method you want to use. So I'm going to do the save to a file method. All right, but if we try and save it right in the root of the D drive, it says it can't be saved in the root directory. We'll have to make a folder for it. So let's do a new folder. Save it there. Click on Next. All right, so now we need to decide how much of the drive we want to encrypt. We can encrypt the use space only, which is faster and better for new computers, or we could do the entire drive, which is slower but best for PCs and drives already in use. And if you do do the option here to encrypt use this space only, it doesn't mean that only that data will be encrypted and nothing else will be as you add more. So as you add more data to the disk, it will be encrypted as well. All right, so we're going to do this method for the sake of time here. All right, so now we need to choose which method to use. So starting with Windows 10, they introduced a new disk encryption mode that provides additional integrity support, but is not compatible with older versions of Windows. So if you don't plan on taking this drive out and putting it in an older computer, you're probably going to want to use the new encryption mode. So we'll stick with that. All right, so encryption might take a while depending on the size of the drive, and you can still use the computer while it's happening. So you probably want to do this option here, which will ensure that BitLocker can read the recovery encryption keys correctly before encrypting the drive and it will restart your computer before encrypting. So this is just a test computer so I'm not worried about it so I'm going to leave this unchecked and click on start encrypting. Alright so you can see it's going at a pretty decent speed here so I will pause the video and then be back when it's finished. Alright so the encryption of the C drive is complete. So it took probably less than 10 minutes, but this is just a test computer with not a lot of data on it. So we'll click on Close. All right, so you can see BitLocker is on, and we have some options here. So we have Suspend Protection. So this doesn't decrypt the drive. It just kind of temporarily disables it. So if you're doing like a BIOS update or adding some more RAM or doing a hardware change, uh, you could suspend it and then make your changes and then turn it back on. And then if you want to back up your recovery key a different way, you could do this. So let's say you decided to print it or save it to your Microsoft account. You could do that as well. Then, of course, you could turn it off. All right, then we have our removal drive. So if we want to do BitLocker to go, we could turn it on for here as well. So you could just do a password, or if you have a smart card, uh, you could do that. But you'll need to insert the smart card to access the drive when you boot back up. So let's just try it with a password here. Of course, you're not going to want to forget the password. We'll save this one to a file as well. All right, so watch what happens if I try to save it to that same folder on the D drive here. It says can't be saved to encrypt a drive. You choose a different location. And if I try and do it to the C drive, let's say on the desktop, same thing. So this will require putting it on a flash drive or some other drive that you have inside your computer. So if we do print the key, then you can print it out. Let's just say print it out here. Let's put it on the desktop. So obviously this is just demonstration. You're going to want to print it on a piece of paper. 
and not make a PDF out of it on the same drive here. Okay, we're going to use the same method here. So see how it defaults to compatible mode since it's a different drive besides your Windows drive because it thinks you might want to take it out and put it in a different computer. But this drive's not going to be leaving this computer, so I'm going to do the new mode here. Start encrypting. All right, so that was done. And that was real quick because there's technically nothing really on that drive. Now you can see we have options to change the password, remove the password, configure a smart card, auto unlock. So if you turn this on, then you won't have to put in the key to access the drive. So let's restart the computer real quick and see what happens. All right, let's go ahead and log in. Now you can see we're back into Windows. Didn't have to put in a key because we're using the TPM method, so it's kept there. And as long as there are no hardware changes, then it should be fine. All right, so now let's check out the D drive here. So you can see it has this lock on it here because it's locked. We click on it, we need that password we just configured. All right, so let's go back to control panel real quick. So now if we wanted to remove the password or turn on auto unlock, we could do that from here. So that way we wouldn't have to put in the password every time we restart the computer. But that's only the first time you log on. So once you put in the password the first time, you can see the key change to unlock. So let's go to this PC, get a better look, so you can see it's unlocked instead of locked. All right, so that's Windows Pro. So now let's go over to a Windows 11 home computer and see how that works. Okay, so we're on Windows 11 Home. If I go to Control Panel, you can see there is no BitLocker option here because BitLocker is not part of Windows 11 Home. All right, so this computer is a little interesting because it is a virtual machine and it does not have the required hardware for device encryption. So I go to the settings here. I don't have an option under privacy and security for device encryption, which normally looks like this here. You can see there's no device encryption. I have device security, but not device encryption. And if I go to the Windows Security Center, I do not have it here as well. And then I could go to the System Information tool and then go down to Automatic Device Encryption Support. And you can see I have this message here. PCR7 binding is not supported. Hardware security test failed. Device is not in modern standby. And like I said, that's because it's a virtual machine and it does not meet these requirements, even though it does have a virtual TPM. So I can't actually show you how to turn it on on this, but I did want to show you where you could go to check. So normally you would go to your settings here, like I said, and go to privacy and security, device encryption, and then you could turn it on from here. But like I said, at the same time, there's a good chance it's already turned on, especially if you're using a Microsoft account. So if you want to turn it off, come here and do the same thing. All right, so there is your overview and demonstration of BitLocker and device encryption. So hopefully that makes sense. So now it's up to you to decide if you want to use it or not based on what you've seen here. Or maybe you want to do a little extra research to help you decide if it's something that's going to work for your computer. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.